I'm Justin Boyd. I'm Brittany Pacheco. And I'm a kid again. <laughs> and I'm Marcy. And we are the X-Men Watchers in the Basement. Welcome to the Watchers in the Basement. That's right. We are here today to discuss X-Men 97, the first two episodes of the continuation of the old school 90s uh, animated series that aired on Fox as part of the Fox Kids lineup from 1992 to 1997. And uh, Frank, I'm going to start with you because uh, I know how much you love this series or you love the, the previous series. Uh, just start us off and just tell us like what what did the did the OG series mean to you and how has this continuation gotten off to the, like kind of start, like how does it compare to the show you watched as a kid? The OG series was, it was the symbolism of my childhood. Um, if I, if I could name three cartoons, it was X-Men, um, Thundercats and Transformers. Um, those, those pretty much shaped my childhood. Um, I was not a morning person at all. And X-Men was the reason I got up every Saturday morning. Um, it was, and for me, it was like the first time in my life that I, I, I read literary content and then watch a show that mirrored the literary, con- literary content that I, I read as a child. Like, like, like a lot of times when you read a book or you read comic books and the, a show or movie adaptation comes out of it, it doesn't really like hit the same. This hits the same. Like it's, if not more, because you're you're seeing it come to life on on film. And um, there's a small part of me that I wish the X-Men movie series was a big success because that was the reason why I fell in love with Marvel in the first place. Like the kids will never know today, like the the success of Avengers that's going on today in the MCU was the success of the X-Men in the 90s, the cartoon series. Like it was everything to us. Um, and for this new series to pick up right where the OG series left off was just, it's, it's seamless. Like I'm, I'm 10 years old again, watching this series. Um, you know, I mean, even though the illustration is a little bit different, but like the story is the same, the mutant struggle with, for, um, mutant rights against human, uh, against humanity is the same. Um, all the problems and all the conflicts surrounding the human and, and mutant conflict, it's, it's all still prevalent in this series and it doesn't drop off at all, which is, I'm, I'm, I'm so surprised. And to like bring back the nostalgic vibe of like all the char- all the people that voiced those characters back, was it 30 years ago now? To still have those people come back yeah, and voice these same characters. Them, yeah. yeah, most of them, yeah. It just, it adds a level of just nostalgia for me that when I hear Storm talk, I, I hear that, I hear that, you know, that person voicing them. When I hear Cyclops talk, it's, it's, it's the same vibe that I got when I was 10 years old. Yeah, no, it's it's definitely it's definitely really cool. Uh Brittany, what memories do you have of the animated series from from back in ninety two? Or ninety two to ninety seven. <laughs> yeah, ninety two I was barely three years old, right. Justin. So I, <laughs> my recollection of, of that time is is very slim to none. But I did grow up watching this show with my brother Mike. I mentioned this in our last pod over X Men, uh the two thousand movie, which kicked off uh, the 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 movie franchise, which is very near and dear to my heart. You know, I agree with Frank about wishing that that movie, that movie series was like a a bigger success because of how much I love the animation series when I was a kid. So for that being said, when X-Men 97 was announced uh, a couple years ago or whenever it was, I was so excited because that theme song alone is so iconic. Like you'll hear me randomly at the office, in my home, wherever I may be. And I will just, here on this pod, I, I know I've done it here on this pod yep. numerous times. You'll hear me bust out with the, din 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 I mean, that that is so, so iconic. And it brings such wonderful memories back uh, from my, my time watching this show, uh, like I said, with my brother. And the fact that they, they the showrunners, decided to just literally keep this, animation as a 2d and not try to like change it to be you know pixar or more you know 3d model type thing that to me was a huge win because not only does it keep up with the nostalgia it's it it's it's a a major nod to keeping to the original uh illustrations the content and what have you and bringing back a lot of these voice actors to to uh 
be their characters all over again. It's just, it's incredible. So I, I love the fact that we're getting a chance to sit here and talk about this. And I'm so glad that we are also joined uh, by Marcy here, who um, it's been a while since, since she's joined us here on the podcast, but uh, I'm going to turn it over to Marcy and, and, and let her share her thoughts about uh, X-Men 97. Cause I know she's got some feelings about a certain mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, it's the return of me. I'm glad to be back on the pod. I'm glad to be back with you all. I don't have memories of watching this cartoon as a kid because I didn't. However, um, I'm a big fan of like pop culture in general. I'm a big fan of 90s pop culture. i um, big fan of the throwbacks being a kid of the 80s and the 90s. So um, I did watch the uh, X-Men movies, you know, the Patrick... Um, Sir Patrick Stewart and uh, Ian McKellen. So I was a fan of those, actually. Um, and it was great to just kind of dive into this. Um, the animation, again, was great. It had such a great 90s feel without feeling dated or corny or cheesy. I loved the voice acting. I loved the animation. The Their costumes, their outfits, their hair. It's amazing. Magneto. Love his costume he just like walked in and i was like oh my gosh like that is so amazing um so i've just had a great time like watching these first two episodes and i'm excited to get to talk more about the characters and their whole overall looks because it is just so nostalgic yeah no, no doubt about the nostalgia you know I'm, I'm a little bit older than everybody i think here on the show and uh i did watch the show when i was a kid but I didn't watch every week. Like I, I probably watched maybe 10 episodes ever. So I like Brittany, like everyone else in the world, the music is so like the theme song is so iconic. And, and uh, so I remembered that of course, but uh, to prepare for this, for the X-Men 97, I went back and watched all five seasons, all 76 episodes, which are available on Disney plus. I watched, in fact, I watched the final three seasons, like basically like in three days. So, uh, I binged it to get caught up just so we could be ready for this. And you know what? It was worth it because X-Men 97 is like, it's not even a continuation of the first series. It's so much better than the first series. And it does this really neat trick that I don't think many things can do where it's both nostalgic, but it's also modern. Like, I don't know how they pull it off, but they, they do yet. The show is still based in 1997. I mean, if you just look at like the, their world, like Cyclops has a not joke, which is very nineties, which he had the same <laughs> not joke in one of the episodes in the, the original series. Um, I just, I don't know how they did it, but it's like, it's, it's modern, but also nostalgic. It's, it's just like watching. it. I was like, this is not only is this like just amazing, like stories and, and does it look great, but it just, it, it gave me a really good feeling. And so like, I can't wait for the rest of the season. I mean, I think the first two episodes are phenomenal. Like this is some of the best stuff that Marvel's done in, in quite a while. And I, you know, I loved what if season two, I thought that was great, but I think this is like a step above that. And those are, those are characters that I truly loved. I didn't grow up loving the X-Men. I watched the cartoons and some of the movies, but, uh, but now this is, this is really, really phenomenal. And uh, uh, Frank, I want to get your thoughts on the, the character roster, because we talked about how the theme song is the same theme song as, as in the, you know, the previous uh, series. But like, uh, and the intro basically is the same for the characters too, except for there's, there's one new character that, that you noticed right away was a part of the team who wasn't a part of the team. He was in some episodes, but it wasn't a big part of the team, uh, in the, in the OG series. You want to talk about that character a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it was the first thing I noticed in the, in the, uh, in the intro when I saw Bishop, um, he's, he's not an, uh, added fixture in this X-Men team and there's variations of, of, of the X-Men teams with Bishop on there. But he's a time he's like cable he's a time traveling um mutant who goes between the 616 and and um other other like future uh alt um alternations trying to trying to like stop like the the apocalypse of like of of mutant and humankind ending so to see him in in this current on this current roster i, I hope i wonder if they if they get into that if they if they get into why he's there or like what made him stay hopefully later on in the series because um the original OG series he he went back and forth um right. and i think he ended he went back in the future and he was stuck in the future so um but i'm i'm excited to see him he's one of the more he's one of my more favorite um 
X-Men characters because, I mean, he's he's very powerful. I mean, kinetic energy and absorption of, of, of all types of energy, and he can rechannel it and everything. So um, seeing him there, I mean, that, that will, this is probably like the, the one of the biggest rosters in, like, recent memory um, mm-hmm. of the X-Men. I mean, that, I think it's like eight people there now. Um, normally, yeah. they, they, they tier top around six. So, um, not so not counting Magneto, but um, yeah, it, it's it's pretty cool to see him there, and I, I hope they dig more into why he's there and and how he got there, and then seeing Morph. I know Morph kind of went back and forth too in the OG series. Like he left, he was presumed dead, and he came back, and then he he, he left again due to Mister Sinister and you know some of his um, trials and tribulations. So to see Morph and Bishop there as full time X Men man is pretty cool. Yeah, and speaking of Morph, he's got a different look. Than he did in the OG series, he he's more pale, and they said it's it's because of it's a comic um, comic book storyline. Age of Apocalypse is how he this is how the character looked in that comic line. So they made him look like that. Also, they have the in the notes they have Morph identifies as non-binary, which um, you know you, if you didn't know that you wouldn't. I don't know that you really would know that. So I mean, I think that's kind of cool where they made a character who can turn into anything be you know non-binary. Um, also, the character, he's an important character, though, because he's like one of Wolverine's like best friends. Like, no matter what happens, he's like him and Wolverine are like they're just like their buddies. So I think it was cool to have him uh, be a part of the series in, in this new incarnation, because he's obviously on the team. He probably has the lowest name recognition, I would think. Yeah. Not many people know who Morph is, you know. And it was like in the OG series, like he went out with a bang in the first episode, the the yeah. nine Sentinels part one. Right. Like he was presumed he was presumed dead for like I think for almost a season or two before he reemerged again. So uh to see him there and like and, and he was he was in the finale of season five as well. He yeah. was back, but I mean to see him there and like in in, in on the team it makes me happy. Yeah. And, and speak, uh, Frank, just letting you talk a little bit more about this. Speaking of, of season five, why don't you let everybody know kind of where the series left off before we jump into 97? Yeah, so throughout the series, there was a lot of friction between um, humans and mutants. Um, during that, there was, there was a, a mutant hating group called Friends, FOH, Friends of Humanity, yep. uh, that, was, that was founded by Grayling Creed, which is Sabretooth's uh, illegitimate son. Uh, with mystique and um they they hatched a plan to uh to um kill charles xavier and he gets i I believe he got shot and um but he his consciousness even though his body was was like in this coma he he was he was he was alive but like in a in a in a i guess i guess a parallel state so um so the X-Men were kind of like just, they were all just um, distraught about that. And in the end of that series, and the, the last episode, um, Leandra from the Share Empire, um, was the out of space um, team, they, uh, Charles Xavier on again, off again, love her. She, she came down along the Share Empire and they took her, they took his body um, and, his, and his consciousness. And like, even though he's not, he's not dead, he is, they're, they're trying to find a way to bring him back to his body um it was a weird it was a weird season finale it was a real a weird serious finale kind of came out of nowhere it seemed rush um but as of right now for people who don't know he's he's with the share empire out of space his body's there his his consciousness is still intact they're just trying to find ways to get him back to his body up up and alert again so that leaves cyclops um as the leader of the x-men for the time being uh, going to episode one so i think the I think the time, I think it might've been like a six months time period between the finale of season five and going into season six of this new season. Yeah. I think they say, they say like, it's like between months and a year. So it's about a year or so it seems like, um, uh, Brittany. So learning how the season five ended of the OG series with Xavier, how do you think they did as far as like dancing around his absence? Cause they don't, I mean, they, they show a death certificate. They say that he's gone, but they don't, I mean, I guess you're supposed to believe he's dead, but like to me, I think they do a good job of like just not like openly mourning for this guy because you know he's going to come back. He's in the intro. It does leave the impression of kind of this is he really gone? It it leaves it open for that interpretation for audience to kind of go back and forth. It's like, well, we saw him 
die at the end of season five, but because there wasn't like that whole formality of, of the morning and, and, you know, like, a, let's say a grave and this and that would have you. It's like, you see the death certificate. Okay, fine. But they kind of just gloss over and just kind of carry on up until the end of episode one, which, you know, we'll get into. Um, but before I go any further, Justin, I do want to give a shout out to those here in our live chat. We really appreciate those who take the time out of their day to join us for our podcast live chats. It makes this so much more interactive and so much more fun to get your perspective of things. So big shout out to uh, McDorks here, um, as well as Amber of all of Amber's wands. We appreciate you being here. And Raheem, Raheem has been a, a follower of ours within the last year or so. And so we appreciate you being here as well. Um, and don't worry, we're going to address your question that you have here in the chat later on. Um, so with Charles Xavier, you know, being present but not present it kind of gave me that impression of like this is there's no finality to him because why else would they still keep him in the intro if he was really gone that's all i'm gonna say yeah it's you know i mean with these characters they're never really gone right like i mean i think only like uncle ben peter parker's uncle he he's dead and i don't think he comes back but every other combo character returns in some form or fashion so um so so marcy let, let's kind of get into the first episode what did you think i mean you, you didn't watch the the original series but um what did you think initially just kind of like first impressions of how the episode started you know did it did it make you you're like okay i, I understand what this is or did it take a second before you're like okay i'm kind of kind of putting this together it kind of just took a second just because it had been a while since I'd seen the actual movies from like the early 2000s. Yeah. Uh, but then once it kind of got started, I was like, okay, yes, like the mutants uh, are not liked by the humans. There's antagony antagonism there. Um, so I was like, okay, so they've, um, they've got this Roberto guy. He's been kidnapped um and now they have to save him so i was like okay i'm kind of up to speed and then i saw storm and i was like oh badass like she looks so cool um so then it just kind of like swept me up and again like the animation the voice acting was just great so i was like okay uh i am along for the ride now and then i love when they were um when you see rogue i love her accent <laughs> and <laughs> like uh the beignets I mean, they were just cooking beignets, and I was like, everybody just gets a plate of like six beignets. This is insane. So, um, I loved seeing just kind of like the back and forth and then the com camaraderie between them. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm not a fan of Rogue's accent, I'm just gonna say this. That's why I made the face. I love gambits, though. My god, yeah. and, and yes, earlier to Christian and McDorks, he's all like, Can we talk about gambit? Oh my, yes, I agree. For an illustration. Oh my. The crop top just I was like, I love your outfit. Just the crop. And he's like frying beignets. Like he's not scared that that oil is gonna splatter on him. You do yeah. you boo. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, you might be surprised to learn that that Gambit, it's a different voice actor. The guy mm -hmm. sounds just like the previous voice actor, but it's it's not the same person. In fact, let me let me run through the voice cast so that we as far as like which characters are the same. So Storm is the same person. The same person voices Wolverine. Rogue is the same person. Uh, Beast is the same person. Actually, the person who, who voices Beast, uh, the voice actor's name is George Busa. He actually made a cameo in X-Men 2000. He's the guy who drops off Rogue, or he's, he's the record driver with Rogue before she meets Wolverine. Yeah. So no kidding. Yes, yeah, so they got, he got a little cameo wow. back in the day. So. Those actors are the same, but uh, you know Jubilee. It's a different actor actress for Jubilee, and that that the person does does a very good impression, I believe. Cyclops is Cyclops is a different actor. Again, he sounds just like Cyclops from the show, and Jean Grey is a different person. So, um, you know, about about half and half as far as the main characters. Uh, I was just going to drop a spoiler about Jean Grey, but never mind. I'll I'll wait for yeah, that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to we'll get to Jean Grey more. <laughs> uh, so Frank. Lear learning that information wh what did you think about the voice cast what as far as like the the newer people to, in my mind i couldn't i mean if i didn't know they're different i don't think i would know 
I didn't I didn't know there were different um when I saw the the um the preview of episode yeah. one there was a line of Wolverine something the helicopter it didn't sound it didn't sound like him the way he said bub it didn't sound right. like him at all but like when I watched the show it, it sounded like him so maybe maybe he had an off day that day voicing the character but um, I think it was an edit I think they edited the clip different because in the in the trailer he says something different when when he's in the the blackbird yeah right? so I think they just edited it and it you the bub was just from another time he said bub okay gotcha yeah. gotcha no nah, but 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 listening to it it, it it's they sounded just like the ones from 30 years ago I, mean, I didn't i didn't even know somebody voiced gambit uh, it was a different person voicing gambit sounds exactly the same i, I couldn't tell the, the same cajun raspy uh, new orleans voice sounds just like the one from 30 years ago so uh, but i mean i mean bless them man for all of them to be alive <laughs> to still because that's, yeah. that's a long time ago you know i mean i don't know how old they were back then but 30 years is a long time so to be able to get 98 percent of the cast back to voice them is it the, first, the same person voicing magneto as well do you know that's a different actor also okay i, I couldn't yeah. tell it sounded just like the magneto from back in the day too yeah because the the actor who voiced magneto he actually died in 2020 so oh, um, they have a new okay. they have a new voice um you know going back like magneto was not as it didn't seem like he was in as many episodes as you would think he would be back in the in the original series in my mind yeah. like it they did a good job of like not overloading it with just one character, even even though like you know Wolverine is the most popular character. I think they did a good job with that, and it'll be interesting to see how they do with this season. This season's only going to be ten episodes, so it's it seems like it's going to be ten serialized episodes where it's going to be you know you have to follow the story as they go along. There won't be any like bottle episodes where they're just doing whatever. Um, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how that how that all plays out, but. Uh, but yeah, the, the voice cast, I, th- I think it's great. I think this is, you know, a highlight and f- to bring people back. That's also pretty cool. Uh, I was personally most excited for Storm. because She's such a badass yeah. in the animated series. And I wish, no disrespect to Halle Berry at all. I wish we got that same sort of badassness in the live action films. Like, I, it was just missing. It was just missing. I, I I didn't I didn't get the vibe, but animated storm, my girl, such a badass. Voice and all. <laughs> and I think it's fitting the way the series starts is Storm uh-huh. is the first super powered mm-hmm. you know mutant that you see. And given what happens with her in this two episode arc, I think mm-hmm. it was kind of cool how she started off. And she seems like she's the most powerful mutant. I mean, maybe Magneto also, and we'll get to him in a little bit, but uh she has a really strong start to to the episode to the to the series. Uh, Marcy, what did you think about about Storm? Like, were there any like, give me a couple of characters that like became your instant favorites? Um, yes. So Gambit, the crop top, the beignet cooking, love that. Magneto, yes. Uh, the whole just vibe and look and everything. Um, Rogue, I think I told you all in the chat that we had, like just. Major Bonnie Raitt vibes, and then like the voice acting, it's great. Storm, um, again, I love that she was the first one we saw. She just comes in, she's just, like so powerful, and the, just the way she speaks, and it's just it's badass. And it's Women's History Month, and I just love that she is just such a badass character, and she just happens to be a woman, and everybody loves her. Were you getting like Dolly Parton vibes with Rogue? Because I was totally getting Dolly Parton vibes with Rogue. I'm just saying, oh, yeah. like it was laying it on thick. My yeah. ass. <laughs> oh, yeah. you've got to go back and, and watch the the OG series. No, no, I, I I'm I'm it's, fully aware. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, I was like, this, I'm like, what did they cast Dolly? Like, my goodness. <laughs> and then obviously Wolverine, just kind of like his vibe and just kind of like his grumpy gruffiness. Yeah. Um, it was just kind of like, oh, yes. <laughs> has not <laughs> changed. Again. Yeah. Has not changed. Has not skipped a beat. He's still very much infatuated with Jean Grey. Like, my goodness. It's yeah. I love that. I love well, that again, as I said, from from the animated series of old to now. Like they mm-hmm. they have stayed true to these characters and the storyline and the fact that like it has progressed, obviously Um, Mm -hmm. Christian in the chat mentioned earlier about how 
um, they edited the show with the newer technology to make the artwork seem smoother. So mm -hmm. if like you notice that the walking isn't as choppy as it used to be, like yeah. it glides a little bit better now, yeah. it, but it's still staying true to like that same 2D art mm -hmm. from, from the days of old. But, you know, just everything about it, the mannerisms, the, the, the sort of, uh, characteristics of these characters is still very much true as today as it was back then it's it's great I, i'm so excited for it no i definitely noticed that like when morph had kind of morphed into uh professor xavier and he they just have him like walking it is like very glidey i was like oh like that's just very like smooth the way he's just kind of like walking and then he obviously transforms back it kind of looks like invincible animation a little bit I don't know. But frankly, I can see that. watched Invincible some. Like it, it kind of reminds me of that a little bit. The way they, the way they changed the animation from uh, from ninety five from yeah from the previous series. Um, you know, you're talking about the the mannerisms and the characters. Well, the love triangle is is very much alive and well thirty years later. And actually, we have two love triangles, and we'll get to the second one here in a little bit. But the first one, obviously, is Wolverine's in love with Jean Grey, but Jean Grey's a Cyclops, and very much so. <laughs> right. And Jean Grey is pregnant. Frank, what did you think about the introduction of seeing Jean Grey with the baby bump and she's like in her workout gear and what were you feeling? Uh, first off, I was like, man, X-Men 97 is taking some mature some uh, mature routes. I mean, we, we, we never had a hint of like any type of like the horizontal Mongo in, in, the, in the original yeah. OG. Now, you know, this man, this man got, got this girl pregnant like she about the bus pregnant like she's she ain't playing no games um no that that was a shocker too because again like when we when we last saw this finale in 90 in 90, 96 she wasn't pregnant yeah. <laughs> so well less than a year has gone by and she's preggers like for real preggers so that that, that was that was a surprise when i saw I, I, my, the, the nerd the nerd in me already knew who it was and who was in who was in our belly but i don't want to i don't want to spoil anything but i was like yeah we'll get to that yeah but yeah i think what happened is is gene said you're wearing a condom right he's like not <laughs> so <laughs> that's what happened that was a special episode i got the the the, the director's oh my god he got the x-rated <laughs> x-men version on disney uh... plus yeah i mean what, what can i say <laughs> like uh the, the house of the mouse has changed a little bit. Oh yeah. my god! They're opening up new horizons. <laughs> Cannot with you. The triple X Men. So, there, we <laughs> That's go. Not there we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So the first episode was titled "To Me, My X Men," which is a phrase that we hear several times in the first episodes, but by different characters. Because, uh, as Frank alluded to. That was something that that Professor X would say to the X Men, and we see that we start the series. And Cyclops is now in charge with with Xavier gone, and we see Cyclops say that. And like whenever the team's fighting the Sentinels, and I thought it was a really cool idea to start the series off with a, a Sentinel battle because that's the way the the original series started off. Like Frank said, the first two episodes, Night, the, Night of the Sentinels, Part One and Part Two. That's how it kicks off the series, and. Uh, to get us going, like they, they, it's like they reintroduced everything. It's, it's so interesting how in the first episode of the original series, you introduce Jubilee, right? You get like her point of view, and in this series, you introduce Robert, uh, is it Roberto de, de Costa? Which Frank, uh, why don't you let people know who that actually turns out to be? Oh yeah, that is my boy Sunspot. He is a very, very powerful mutant. Um, he can, he can absorb all types of solar energy, manipulate solar energy. Um, he's a walking ball of like radiation and energy, um, and he's very, very powerful. He comes from a very rich family as well. Um, uh, I, I mean, he's he's not an original X Men, so to see him in this in this series, um, I mean, he, he was on a, he was on a, a variation of the of the, of the X Men team. I want to say the X Caliber team or X Men Blue team, but. But to not, see him, not the XXX men team. No, no. But but to see him in this series shows me that um, they're trying to expand the, the Marvel world a little bit more with with, with the expansion of characters. Because in their OG series, they kind of just stayed with the original 
with, with that original X Men team that you saw in the in the episode one of season one, but now you you start to see an expansion of like Bishop and like now Sunspot and and a couple other characters. Even even there's a scene where Morph is like turning to a bunch of like different uh, X Men. You see Colossus, you see Psylocke, you see uh, Lady Deathstrike. You know she was an X Men, but um, I like how they they give you hints that we're not afraid to expand this world a little bit more and show you what other mutants that are not really celebrated but are equally as powerful and equally as popular in the comic books and mr DeCosta is one of them and yeah, talk about expanding the world one thing i really enjoyed about the previous series was the fact that you know it's a world where the other marvel characters exist They're, they just like kind of pop in and out like literally like you'll see spider-man for a second or you'll see hulk for a second and uh i'm really interested to see what they do with the other Marvel Universe characters in this, if we see them in this series or not. Now there is a there is a hint in the first episode where the Daily Bugle, you know, we see the newspaper kind of float through the air and there's a headline on there about how, you know, it says, Is Spider-Man a mutant? And then there's a Hellfire Gala uh story, which you know, I think Frank can let us know what that is. And this the byline says words or story by Eddie Brock, photos by Peter Parker. So Seems like we might get Venom and Spider Man, maybe a little bit in this series. But I'm just I'm kind of interested to see how how that plays out. Given this isn't necessarily an MCU project, it's a Marvel anim- it's Marvel Studios animation. Obviously, it's a different continuity than the MCU. But I wonder if we'll see other characters. Uh, Brittany, what do you what do you think about that? Yeah, that kind of goes into Raheem's question or from earlier, like asking, do you think we will get a multi uh crossover between X-Men and the Avengers, especially after Doctor Strange, uh, uh, Multiverse of Madness, sorry, it's spaced yeah. out on the title, and Miss Marvel ending with Kamala having a mutant DNA. And the thing is, I feel like we need to have projects from Disney Marvel that don't necessarily have to tie back into the MCU. I think they need to create separate content for, for it to stand alone in its own universe. I do love the idea because of the teaser that we got of the Daily Bugle, like Justin just explained with Eddie Brock, Peter Parker, um, Spider-Man, those references that will allow us to get those characters in some sort of fashion, possibly that's not mm-hmm. making any promises, of course, but I feel like we don't necessarily have to have everything that will go into the MCU to make sense. This can be its own you know, unique thing. And I feel like it needs to be in order to stay in its true authentic self because it is a continuation from the 90s series. So um, I I would love to see um, those other uh, Marvel characters somehow get incorporated into the X-Men within that world, within it being appropriate. Yeah. But answering Raheem's question, I, what he's asking is more, I think, MCU related because I think that's what we're going to end up seeing. And, you know, we'll have to wait and see what happens in Deadpool and Wolverine. But I, I think that that'll kind of hint toward uh, bringing these old X-Men characters to face off with the Avengers or work with the Avengers or whatever it becomes. I feel like there's a pretty good chance that's going to happen, but that's going to be separate. But, uh, Frank, one thing I wanted to ask you, get, going back to the old series, there were, Carol Danvers was in the old series. She's a key character because of, of uh, Rogue gets her powers from Carol Danvers. Well. But Carol Danvers back then was Miss Marvel, not Captain Marvel. So that's one thing I'm, I'm interested. Like, w- if we see Carol Danvers, I don't think they're going to call her Miss Marvel, given how popular Miss Marvel is on Disney Plus and in the Marvel's movie. Even though it's separate continuities, I don't think they want to confuse the audience with there's another Miss Marvel, but it and it's Carol Danvers who's also Captain Marvel. So, what do you think about that? Do you think we're going to get? Uh, Miss Marvel or Carol, Dan- Carol Danvers back in this in this show? Um, it's quite possible. Um, they did in the OG series. They did a good job of like digging into Rogue's origin story of how she became Rogue, and a big part of that was, you know, um, on accident stealing Carol Danvers' powers to the point where, because a lot because her her power is when she absorbs, she can absorb the life force and, and energies and powers of other people. Um, human and, and, and human mutant alike and often taking the memories as well um but it's tip it's typically temporary it's typically temporary but she touched uh carol for so long that it became permanent and carol was in a was in a, a coma for years and i think 
and was it season three when she finally awoke from that coma? Yeah. But she she didn't have her powers though. Right. So right. um so it'll, it'll be interesting to see if they if they go back to that storyline of like Kara Denver's now and where where she's at now as far as far as her her uh, mutant journey because she's a mutant. I mean they didn't use the term mutant in the MCU, but she's a mutant. So um I, I hope they do. Um but I just want to go back and talk about Sunspot real quick or Mr. Sure. Costa. Uh he's very like he's very, very powerful. And just some of the some of the powers that he has, like he can harness the power of the sun. And on top of that, he has heat vision, health fire control, uh, light projection, magnetism, radiation, stamina, super strength, super flight, uh, teleportation abilities. And he was on a bunch of different teams as well. Um, he was in the new, the new Avengers. Um, he, the first team he was, he was on was the New Mutants, uh, Fallen Angels, Gene Nation, uh, the Brat Pack, uh, Gladiators. So he's a very, very popular character in the comic books. Um, so they can go so many different um, routes with this character. Uh, so I'm I'm really excited to see what's going to do with Sunspot. But um, yeah, Rogue is Rogue is a, pivotal, a, a very pivotal character, pivotal character in this series, and. I hope they flesh out her her character a little bit more, because um, in episode two you, you see some surprises as far as um, some oh shit moments. So, can we talk about that since we're talking about Rose? Yeah, I mean, jump into it. Go for it. I was like, what is happening between her and Magneto? Like the tension between the two was like very much on fire, and saying things about things that had happened in the past between them apparently and rogues like no you keep your mouth shut like you're not gonna bring that to life and then like at the very end of episode two there was a clear connection between the two where she takes off her glove because as we should hopefully all know that you know you you're touched by rogue she absorbs your 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 powers Power, or your, yeah. your life source to to a degree and it appeared to not really have much of an effect with Magneto, unless I just interpret that incorrectly. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Marcy. Like, what do you think about that interaction between Rogue and Magneto? Because like, as a kid back then, that probably would have been lost on me if anything like that had happened back then. But I don't think this kind of thing happened back then. So uh, I'm curious to you as a new watcher when it comes to the series. Yeah, I was like, oh, wow, they boned, like, whenever, like, that happened. I was like, oh, okay, like, this is happening. Um, Yeah, like, lots of just kind of, like, weird sexual chemistry and, like, kind of something has happened, obviously. So, uh, but, I mean, maybe it's, like, his hair or, like, his cool-ass, like, whole outfit that he had going on. He kind of reminded me of, like, David Bowie and just kind of, like, the magnetism, haha, that like he has. Um, I think I don't know if that's what they were going with. I don't think so, but I was just like, oh, like major Bowie vibes, and just kind of like somehow like he's just so cool. But no, like they've boned or close to bone. No, they've boned. Yeah. <laughs> also, how? But I don't want to know how. I mean, I know how, but like how. You find a way, I'm sure. Right. Like, did he wrap it? Like, I'm just, I'm very curious. That, that was surprising to me because I did not know that that Rogue and Magneto had a previous relationship or there was anything. But apparently, Frank, there is some kind of comic book uh, history with them as a couple, correct? Yeah, there's there's multiple um, timelines of them having this little rendezvous um, in the six one six. Uh, there's, there's a comic book where they uh, the Savage Land is a is a is a primordial prehistoric land that's that's off grid in the 616 universe. And there was a time where Magneto and Rogue both seek refuge there. Um, Rogue went through a, a a portal called the Siege Perilous, where it separated her the Kara Danver the Kara Danvers persona from her body, and it manifested a a Kara Danvers body. And but it, it could have sustained itself um, because Rogue was still alive. So that Carol Danvers um, persona tried to kill Rogue, and Magneto stopped it. So in the Savage Land, her powers when was on the Fritz. In the Savage Land, you don't have your powers pretty much. It, it's your powers are like null and void in the Savage Land. And uh, Rogue and Magneto were there at the same time, and they, and they became very close. Um, 
um, during that time. And then there's another timeline called the age of the age of apocalypse. It's an alternate reality where apocalypse wins, and he is the lead, he is the world leader. And um, Magneto is the leader of the X Men at this point. Charles dies. Um, Magneto and, and Rogue on the the leaders, they're not leaders of the X-Men team, but they're on the X-Men team, and um, they fall in love, and they have a baby named Charles as well, who has mutant, uh, mutant telekinesis powers as well, so there's different alternate realities of, like, in the comic books of, of their romance. It was never really portrayed on film. This is the first time ever. This is why it's so huge, and the comic book community has went nuts over the last week, because you haven't seen this um, play out in, in any type of, like, media outside of the yeah. comic book, so. And gambit's left out in the cold and like if Oof. if you watch i mean obviously you can tell from this series but in the first like in the original series he's like all over rogue all the time he's mm-hmm. like hitting on, he i mean he hits on everybody but he's like that's really like his main her. squeeze yeah so uh and it Listen, seemed like go ahead Brittany. I'll, I'll share beignets with gambit it's all good it's all good good old Cajun <laughs> boy yeah okay. um no it, it seemed like the way the series start off or this, this version of the series, it seemed like they were kind of being close to being a couple, whereas that never happened in the original series. Although like they, I mean, there's a lot of flirting They're They're around each other constantly in the series. So, uh, but then to, to right away to see that she has a thing with Magneto and, uh, and you notice because when Magneto comes in at the end of the episode, the first episode, he, he takes over the X-Men because, uh, Charles, uh, basically in his will and testament he gave the x-men to uh to magneto uh you know all the other x-men are talking about how terrible magneto is and he's been like their their you know this thorn in their side for years and rogue calls him by his name eric which they don't refer to him as eric they call him magneto so uh that was a good little you know if you go back and watch it you're like oh that's that's interesting that she like gives it like a personal touch even though she can't personally touch anybody she she does say that and you're like oh that's kind of strange but now you see the the end product you're like okay mm. they're kind of laying the seeds throughout the episode i thought it was i thought the episodes oh, he, were he probably well laid fun. the seed too so yeah. right and, you know, i just <laughs> want to say like sorry i think the show is really well written and it's very unfortunate that the writer of this series was fired a week before it came out he actually wrote the first two seasons and he was working on the third so we're going to get at least two seasons of the show I don't know why he was fired. Who knows? I mean, I'm not going to like defend the guy. I don't know what happened, but I got to yeah. give the guy credit. His name's Bo DeMaio. He nailed it with the store. Like Magneto has some bars and we'll talk about them in a little bit. Like there are some great lines in this that you go back to the original series. You're not getting that. That was a more of a Saturday morning cartoon. This is more of a modern, like for like people our age who maybe watch as a kid a little bit. Now we're, you know, of age where like, we want to watch this kind of content. And, uh, the writing is excellent. I think somebody black wrote many of those lines. Cause those, oh, no. those... Bo, De, Bo De Mayo is a black man. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. That makes <laughs> sense because like there's a line in episode two where he's 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 in front of the congressional uh board of the congressional yeah. hearing and like the, the rioters come and like <laughs> and the congressional the like the, all the politicians are upset about it, like shocked, like why they come for us? Yeah. He was like, Oh, to play by the rules and yet they still come for you. Like Damn, what? I, just, I was not expecting that. I was like, bro, that's a black dude right there. Like that—that's no white man will ever say that. And they stood in front of come for you. What? what, what? Yeah, <laughs> I freaking love it. I freaking no, I, love it. Yeah, let me let me just get to the other big lines in the in the episode. In the second episode, you know, Magneto, the you know he's he's at the UN. He's on trial, and the Friends of Humanity. Which of course they're a thorn in the in the X Men side in the original series, they they continue in this series and uh, they attack, and uh, Magneto basically lifts up everyone you know the the UN leaders and the villain named the Executioner takes them all up into the sky and just lets them know that like at any point he can end this and he you know he says like all the X Men have done is use their awesome power to protect the world that hates them and fears them and. You know, we see Storm, she gets shot by the executioner, loses her powers. And then, uh, you know, Magneto's like, you know, all they wanted was, you know, to this is a shared world with a common future. And, you know, my kind like yours have the right to live. And then he, he tells them, he basically says like, you know, like, 
in the past, I would have just killed you. But, you know, like, because I'm trying to do better because of Charles Xavier's influence, my friend, I'm trying to do better. And he says, you know, uh, I'm trying to be better. Please do not make me let you down. And like, that's, that is both figurative and literal, literal. Like, cause like, you know, he's saying, he, yeah, he's saying like, you know, I'm going to let you down by becoming the villain again, or I can let you down and fall to your death, which to me in that moment, he's like kind of like a more mature Homelander. I thought it was awesome. Magneto <laughs> was great. No notes. He was great. <laughs> Before my Homelander man. goes batshit crazy. Oh my God. <laughs> my nephew watched it. Uh, he's, he's 12 now and he, he watched that episode and like he, like my, like myself, he's watched the OG episodes like over the last few years because he, yeah. he loves Marvel and he asked me, he's like, Uncle Frankie, like, when Stone lost his power, when Stone lost her powers, Manito shed a tear. I was surprised by that. And I was like, why, why, would, why were you surprised by that? He like, he's a villain. I'm like, don't get it twisted. He's a villain to humans, to the mutants outside of the X-Men. To a lot of mutants, he's a, he's a, he, he's a folk hero because he's fighting for the mutant, for the mutant cause. He cares about mutants. He cares about the well-being of mutants. So when Storm got when Storm lost her power, that 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 tear that he shed, right for right for, right for his his big speech, that was frustration and pain of seeing one of his fellow comrades go down, and and you and you kind of start early in that episode too when like the Friends of Humanity is trying to clean up the sewers where the Morlocks are at, and Manita goes down like Manita didn't send Cyclops, he didn't send Rogue, he went down to himself to apprehend those Friends of Humanity because he cares about the mutant kind. Now Charles and Xavier, Charles and Xavier and Magneto are two of this the same the two per, the same person two sides of the same coin. They right. have different ways of doing it, and and for Magneto he's like I don't want to be a victim anymore. I, I want to y'all 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 afraid of us? We're gonna uh, I have no I have no problem extracting fear and showing you that I'm, I'm not I'm not a bad motherfucker. But but I added like kind of educate my my nephew on that because he was surprised that he was he was so vulnerable. And, and emotional over Storm, I'm like this. This is this is on par with with, with uh, Eric Lesher and, and who he is. So, oh my, uh, <laughs> Marcy, I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you. Can you see what Rogue may see in Magneto, as as posed by by Christian uh, here in the chat, or does it have something to do with his hair? <laughs> it's the hair, like I said, <laughs> the magnetism. It's Again, like the eloquence, the smart, the, you know, he shed a tear. Like he's also sensitive. So, I mean, yeah, I can kind of see that. Yeah, of course. What you think about his suit? He's got the awesome. giant him, that sleeveless, showing off the guns, got the flowing hair, just like. It was awesome. Like a huge. A suit with a huge M, like, yeah, I love that. Like, I need to get me a shirt like that. The color scheme was great. It reminded me of a bathing suit I had when I was a kid in the 90s. It was black with, like, a magenta piping. Oh, my um, gosh. She was she was a little Magneto. <laughs> yeah, I was a little Magneto. And, like, just the cape. No, like, no notes for that. Like, it was great. <laughs> it was, like fabulous because like yes he's strong but also kind of like more bowie vibes where you're like yeah like feminine and masculine and it's all amazing yeah uh frank i want to get your thoughts on the on the magneto suit he he's ditched the helmet what'd you think of the look i thought it was fucking tacky i hated the suit oh you hated oh, it wow yeah, a big ass m it looks warped on his chest, it it just looks like it was just. It looked like it looked like the writers had a deadline. Like, hey, we got to turn this se this season into tomorrow morning at seven a.m. What do we do? Let's just put a big fucking M on his chest and call it a day, and take out and take off the helmet. It just looked rushed. It it didn't look it didn't look good to me. I I don't that M looked so warped on his chest. I I didn't understand what the fuck was going on with that suit. I, I don't mind the helmet being gone because the the helmet like convey symbolism of, of Charles not being there anymore. So I, I, I got that the long locks. I'm fine with that. It was just a, just a, the suit itself was just kind of weird. I don't know. I have to piggyback off Frank. The suit makes me uncomfortable. I don't know what it is specifically. I think it's just, 
and 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 I think Marcy's saying like Bowie vibes is is pretty kind of on point, especially you know we have like a, um an androgynous sort of like vibe to it, which I can appreciate. But there's something about <laughs> maybe because it's an it's an animation. I don't know. It just makes me feel very uncomfortable. The 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 fact that the bodysuit comes all the way up, but it's like bare biceps, but you have like the long gloves that come up just past the elbow. So the biceps are exposed. And then this cape that has like this really, really uh, layered cowl kind of like scoop, whatever you want to call that in the front. I don't know. It's just it makes me. <laughs> I, I just don't feel it goes together. I don't care for it. I, I'm more partial to the Magneto suit, of course, from, you know, back in the day. That's very iconic. Uh, if this is just a representation of, quote unquote, turning over a new leaf or something, fine, cool. I'm calling it here and now. It is not going to last. And I hope we see the old suit and the helmet make its return because that's the, the defining look of Magneto. It looks like he's going through a midlife crisis. That's what it looks like. It looks like he's trying to figure out how can I attract these hoes? I'm trying to show my, my biceps. I'm trying to show them that I'm still young. It worked. <laughs> it worked right That's away. It, looks like. it, it looked so like not him. I, I, I didn't get it at all. Like he looks like he's trying to be a young man in, 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 in this in this suit. And I, I don't, Charles I mean, would be very upset at him. I mean, maybe if, he is happens. a young. Yeah. Maybe he is a young man below the belt. I don't know, but like I just I don't I, I'm not digging it personally. I'm just I'm not I'm not hating it. Room. No, Christian Christian, Christian, he, he can show some skin. That is perfectly fine. I'm just not here for it. That's all I'm saying. Maybe I, I just feel like because I'm going through my midlife crisis. Maybe I don't know. Like I, I dig it. Like you do you, boo. Like <laughs> we are here for it. Uh Marcy's here for it. That them them locks though. <laughs> I think it was meant to be like something different because he's the new, you know, he's the leader of the X-Men now, which obviously there are, you know, it does happen in the comics, but uh, I don't, I like it. I like that. It's different. I like that. Uh, change up the look. I, I've never been a big fan of the helmet. Like, I mean, it's a cool idea, but like, I don't know. You, I, I can take it or leave it. It doesn't, doesn't really, doesn't really affect me that much. Like, you know, obviously the helmet helps him against Charles Xavier though. That's why. He needs the helmet with Xavier just so he can't read his mind, right? Um, let's get to uh, let's get to the fact that we, I mentioned how Jean Grey is pregnant. Well, she goes into labor, and Wolverine's the only one who can help her out. He drives to the hospital. I love the line where she's like, "He's here," and you know, she's being her baby, and uh, Wolverine's like, "Who? Apocalypse?" <laughs> I, love, I, I just I don't know. I love the. Wolverine is so like he like we talked about uh, we talked about how Magneto kind of changed a little bit. Wolverine doesn't change. Same character, same like motivations, same grumpy like you know dude like still in love with Jean Grey, driving her to the hospital, driving like a madman. Frank, what are your thoughts on the the whole Wolverine Jean Grey dynamic? First off, like I, I I laugh in that part because when he said who Apocalypse, he said as if. He had a shot of stopping Apocalypse as yeah. if he was there. Like, fam, you're gonna die. <laughs> he was ready to like throw down. Yeah, like that would that would be a 10 second fight. Like, <laughs> like it wouldn't it wouldn't have last long. I promise you. Um, I mean, dude couldn't even drive Gene to the hospital without her having to with the assist. Like, yeah, he thinks he could take on Apocalypse. Yeah, no, he's not. <laughs> I mean, we're talking about one of the. Literally, probably the bravest mutant in in all of the Marvel, and he is scared by a woman in her third trimester about to pop. Like he looked like a deer in headlights. I've never seen this before. This man has fought Saber Tube. He's fought Magneto. He's fought so many different fierce villains, and he looked like he was about to uh, fall by the wayside at the, at the look of Jean Grey um, as a friend of his to the hospital. Yeah. And then they get to the hospital. And Marcy, I want to get your thoughts on this. The the hospital, they don't do mutant births. What'd you think about that? Because I mean, the one the one thing about X-Men, X-Men, they always have done a good job, whether it's comics, movies, or the animated series, is they they tell like social they they, they play out like, the storylines play out social issues. And obviously the X-Men are different. And uh 
This hospital refuses to do mutant births. So tell me what you think about that. Yeah, you're right. It That along with like Magneto's speech, like I was like, wow, that is like a mirror to like things that happen in real life and things oh, yeah. that are happening now. So it just kind of, again, drives home the point that they are treated differently and it's unfair and all they want is to just not be hated. Like that's all like, they don't want to like go around killing humans and wreaking havoc because they could, they very easily could. Right. Yeah. Yeah, They just want humans to leave them the fuck alone. So, um, yeah, it was just a very poignant sort of, um, moment. Um, and I guess, I don't know. Maybe that's why Wolverine was a little bit scared. I mean, I've never given birth, but that sounds like a very scary thing. So uh, I'm not mad at Wolverine for just kind of being like a deer in the headlights in that moment. And I'm glad that he was able to kind of like be there for her. Like that's kind of, I guess that cements a friendship. <laughs> I mean, Thank I you very- like, like, not getting like pre like natal care. Like that is a very good question. <laughs> I, I can't with you, Christian. I swear I can't with you. <laughs> Maybe the X-Men don't have good insurance. Who knows? Maybe they... Oh. But like, this, this is what I don't understand. Like, Charles Xavier was a fucking millionaire. Like, they he <laughs> left his fortune to Magneto and the X-Men. You, I couldn't have a, a doctor on staff? Like, I don't, I don't understand. That makes he no sense. Hank, you go to the Hank, county hospital? Was Hank McCoy, like, going to deliver the baby or something? Like, I'm sorry, Beast. Like, could he have done it? And that's why they wanted to keep it in house. Mm. I don't know. I mean, yeah. I'm just I'm like, pulling us straws here. You're taking a mutant to a county hospital. It's like the Ben Tob of hospitals. Like, <laughs> I don't like not what, Ben Tob. Like, like, what are we? What are we doing? This is a powerful mutant of Jean Grey. And you bring it to a county hospital. You this is you have the Blackbird. You have the Danger Room. You have millions of dollars of worth of equipment at at, at the X Mansion. Y'all can't afford a fucking doctor on staff. I guess it just <laughs> drives home the point that. No matter how rich you can be, if society thinks that you're different, then like you're still going to be other. I don't know. Like maybe Wolverine could have just done a C section or something. Like he had. I wouldn't want him to do a C section. Are you brutal? Wow. Just like one claw. Oh, that was dark. (laughs) That was dark. Oh my God. This is a very mature series. RC wants it to go a step further. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, it's already traumatic enough. It. It's already traumatic enough for a guy to like take the woman that he loves, who is impregnated by her husband, who he doesn't love. He hates. Who he doesn't Cyclops, love. Right? He hates with a fiery passion, right. and or or you know, uh, red red you know, yeah. um, whatever you call it, laser fit passion, and you know, takes her to the hospital. And yeah. I, I mean, also kudos, not kudos, but like. That doctor had some balls on him to like tell one of the more like dangerous mutants out there, like, yeah, we're not going to birth this child. I'm like, I'm sorry, how are you still alive at this point? I mean, good God. <laughs> but, that, but that just shows That's... you how, how far hate goes, though, man. Yeah. Hate is such a blinding no, I, I, point. I good get point. It. Yeah. yeah. I and, absolutely get it. And that goes back to the original series. Mm-hmm. Frank, we were joking about this the other day. It's like the the humans are so brazen in how they're just like treat the mutants like shit. And it's like they could kill all of you and not even like they could just turn like move their hands and you're all dead. It's like it's such it's so crazy how they're like they're such tough guys and it's like snap yeah. of fingers and you're like they can break your neck or something. It's just so so crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's 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 funny as hell. Like. It was other Magneto. They all would have been dead by now. Like, yeah. it, oh, yeah. been, it just would have been like the world just would have been Genosha. It just, been, yeah. it just would have been mm-hmm. full of mutants. Mm-hmm. I'll Maybe tell you that better world. that was that was a that was a heck of an episode. I mean, both both of these episodes were were very well told and just very well executed. And uh, you know, we we kind of have to like address the elephant in the room, which is the ending or am i jumping too far ahead let's let's do one thing first i want to talk about the saddest moment of the two episodes this is not not a joke it's what happens to storm because the executioner has this weapon where it basically takes away the powers of the mutant storm 
you know, the executioner, the target is Magneto. Executioner has Magneto in his sights. Storm sacrifices herself. She loses her power. She gets shot, loses her powers. And then she like, she's on the ground and she's like, the breeze is gone. I cannot feel the moisture nor the air. And it's like, what has he done to me? She starts crying. That's sad. On it, like for, incredibly. This this show like really bumped up the levels of like all the emotions. And it was like legitimately like this is pretty sad because like she has so much power and she uses it for good. And then this guy like shoots her with this laser and she now she's just a regular person. Oh my god, Christian here in the comments with, with a dark thought. I think Magneto knew what was happening. Sorry. I, I, I don't disagree. I don't disagree because he he's he seems happy to to sacrifice to, to have someone as a sacrifice so that he can make one of his killer speeches so yeah i feel like it looking at it hindsight now it could have very well been like an inside job that like christian's saying in the chat that magneto has a plan magneto has a plan to probably further his cause further his his reasons for doing the things that he was previously doing because he didn't stop the executioner ahead of time or could sense maybe the you know he he can control metal right so like how could he not have sensed that ahead of time you know what i mean so it is it is a little sus on that part but it, it did seem for the moment he was genuinely sad when storm was no longer able to use her powers because they were evaporated out of her and I that it did break my heart because I like I said she's such a badass in the show that I was genuinely shocked when I saw that happen because she had talked to Jean earlier about you know what would that Jean kind of secretly wanted the baby to be born human and not with any sort of mutant power of any sorts and I can't remember exactly what what Storm had said but she just kind of maybe echo the sentiment in a way. I don't remember precisely. Don't come at me, y'all. Sorry, I don't remember everything verbatim. But um, yeah, now she's going to have to like walk this life of being human and not having her powers. Like, how do you, how do you go about that? That's a good question. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. I mean, this is, this is your identity. This is like, this is who you are and and i mean to have that taken away from you and, and more importantly like she was she learned to to love herself i mean she as a lot of mutants when they come into adulthood when that x gene is flourish is finally manifests itself they they see themselves as freaks and she was a thief in cairo egypt and like when charles xavier found her he pretty much you know rich um pretty much brought her up and like taught her how to love her powers so she came a long way from who she was before being a being a thief in a prior life so to come to grips to come to grips with her powers and who she was who she is as a woman a queen a goddess and to lose all of that in, in one fatal shooting um it, it's it's crazy um that scene is symbolic because to have that happen around magneto in the comic book, Storm and Magneto are very close friends. The, the bond is very, very close. Um, and the resurrection of Magneto's storyline, um, it, it kind of goes into that relationship between Storm and Magneto. When Charles dies, Storm and Magneto and, and Cyclops gets exiled from the X-Men due to some shit that went down with the Avengers. Um, Storm and Magneto are like co-leaders of the X-Men. So I, I, thought, I thought that was perfect character placement of the writers to put Magneto in the room and have Storm take that bullet for Magneto. For for comic book nerds, it kind of shows an inside glimpse of like what Storm's willing to do to protect not just mutant kind, but like her friend Magneto, which I think is going to manifest in this series as well uh, from the comic books too. Yeah, I I I agree. It seems like we're we're getting going that way. Um, Marcy, what did you think about the letter that Storm writes that that uh, that Jean reads? She she wrote a letter to Jean to basically say like, now that I don't have my powers, I don't belong with y'all. I'm not an X Men anymore. And she gets in the bus and leaves. Yeah, that was 
sad just to have that realization in as a human with no powers it does suck to be a human with no powers so i guess like that adds some levity it does um, suck being a human with no powers really, really sucks. Suck. it does suck <laughs> damn it um i think you have to be very strong though to i think have that kind of realization to walk away right because she's just kind of like well like i don't belong here so now i have to like go find somewhere else to belong but is she really going to be able to do that and then how do you just kind of like walk away from just like your clan like your group when you are so othered in like regular human life so um yeah that had to be like really tough that was kind of like sad i was not expecting to get that sad watching a cartoon so i was like wait <laughs> why am i feeling feelings um <laughs> yeah yeah, uh, Christian in the chat says, I think she left because she needs to find herself and being reminded of what she lost is too hurtful. Like something special is dead to her. And and I agree with that wholeheartedly. I mean, for for someone who had to grow up the way that she did and you know, the mutation doesn't really manifest itself until like a certain certain age. Right. And so you kind of grow up two different ways. You grow up thinking you're you're one way and then you're you're discovering your powers and then how to navigate life using those powers, having to navigate life with people viewing you differently. And when you finally come to terms with that, like discovering who you really are, you come to terms with that. And then it's taken away from you by someone who hates you because you are who you are. You have to start all over again. Like that's tough. Like I can't imagine, but like this can't be the last we see her of her. I can't believe that she's going to be without her powers like permanently as as Beast suggested. I'm hoping they're either going to find a way to like reverse the fact that she lost her powers or that it's something within her own genetic mutation that she'll be able to make a comeback like in some fashion. It might be slow, but I think she'll get regain her powers at some point. I say by the season finale, she has her powers back, which, you know, only eight more episodes. So probably, probably a decent guess. Um, as Jean's narrating or reading the letter or after she finished reading the letter, Morph is like, he's like, he's like, Storm's going to come back. She's, she's going to spend one day with the regular people. And then she's going to want to come back here. And then of course the doorbell rings and we have another Jean Grey who falls into Morph's arms and says, I need the X-Men. Now, Frank, when I saw this, I was blown away. Had no idea who is this person, right? Because Jean Grey is standing right behind us with her new son, Nathan Charles Summers, which I guess, Frank, we can talk about that too. But first off, talk about, so there's two Jean Greys. Is there, is there a clone? Do we have a time traveler? Or what the hell's going on, Frank? Let us know. So when I saw the real Jean Grey um, fall, up, fall into Morph's hands, yeah. Uh, arms in the in the in the episode um the first the two words i said was nathan essex it will be in this series and for those who don't know who nathan Essex is that is mr sinister uh in the comic books mr sinister is and you see in the cartoon series too yeah. he is obsessed with creating the perfect mutant like that that, that is his life's goal he's a geneticist He's pretty much immortal. Like he was a geneticist back in the eight seventeen hundreds. Like he's been around for a long time, and for some reason he's very obsessed with Cyclops and Jean Grey's DNA. And he and throughout the comic book series, the comic book run, he's tried to kidnap Jean Grey and Cyclops. He's harvested DNA. Like he's he's done all these different things to try to because he believes those two mutants are so powerful. They're, they're both Jean Grey's a mega level mutant. Cyclops is almost in the mega level mutant. But those that DNA together. And his mind creates the perfect mutant. And in the storyline, which is it's gonna it's gonna manifest in front of our eyes, um, he does kidnap Jean Grey and um he clones her. Um and he has the other the real Jean Grey in suspension. The reason why he cloned her because he really wants Cyclops to 
to impregnate Jean Grey or a clone of Jean Grey to create the perfect mutant. So um, I'm sure that there's going to be um, some flashbacks because again, we are a year later from the from the season five finale, so a lot has happened yeah. in that year. Maybe it was prior to the season finale of, of, of season five. We don't know when. We don't know when. The Jean, the real Jean Grey was abducted in Madeline, and Madeline. The clone's name is Madeline Pryor. That's the clone's name. Yeah. We don't know when the real Jean Grey was abducted and Madeline Pryor was implemented in in the storyline. But um, Cyclops impregnates her, thinking that's that's his wife, and um, the baby Nathan is Cable. That's who that's who the baby is. Mm-hmm. Is Cable? Cable is not Cable is not going to be in his timeline for for too much longer. He there's an alternate version. But Cable goes back from the future down back to the present present day, and he sees his parents. And um, but he can't he can't tell them who he is because if he does, it affects the whole timeline, and he might not be born in the future. But um, yeah, that's Madeline Pryor, and and Madeline Pryor has has. And, but the thing is, Madeline Pryor really believes she's Jean Grey. It's not like she's in cahoots with Miss Sinister. Right. When Miss Sinister puts Madeline Pryor into into this into this situation. She believes she's Jean Grey. She has a members of Jean Grey, the, the Phoenix, the Phoenix Saga, all of that. She has like there's there's a line where she where she talks about um, the Phoenix Saga. You know, I think episode two. She really believes that, that she's who she thinks she is, which is Jean Grey, but she's not. So yeah. this is some real deep comic book shit, right? Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, it's, it's some it's... real like just you just got to go along with it, like just and, and it's gotta... most of it's great, but yeah, it's 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 wacky. And you have to explain all of this because. This is done all. This is done all. Like this is a lot to happen off shoot, off camera. Like yeah, they got to go exactly. back and like explain yeah. the timeline when all this went down between Professor X dying, the Phoenix Saga, and all this going on. So um, yeah, it's it's, it's going to be crazy. But yes, the woman that was pregnant was Madeline Pryor, not Jean Grey. So I have a question for you, Frank, because it's been said many times here on The Watchers that I myself am not a comic book reader, never have been, not saying I never will be. However, when this episode aired, the ending played out, what did the comic book community have to say about it? How did they react to it? I mean, mind blown. Like, are they like, it's about damn time kind of situation. Like, we're finally seeing these things play out on on i won't say silver screen but on 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 uh, you know play out in front of us like how did the community react um i would say this for as great as the og series was the the one criticism of the og series was they were very slow in expanding storylines of like the team and like what they went through throughout the the, the duration of them being the x-men there was a lot of storylines that were left out there were storylines that were expanded on they didn't need to be expanded on as great as the Phoenix Saga was, that spent over two seasons. <laughs> like it was, it was so long, and comic book readers really got tired of seeing that story for the better part of two years. Um, they, they, there was complaints that they could have went in the direction, they could have shortened that series, short, shortened that saga to half a season. I, I want to say twenty four episodes was like season three. It was really, really long, and it it, it spilled into the next season as well. Um, but people are happy like they, they're they're now seeing like okay okay would we'll, would we'll get into some like real adult shit like this is like and this is this could be touchy because this this is this is sexual assault this this is this is you know um mr sense is a very very twisted individual like he this he does some fucked up shit to jane gray in the comic books um and and her clone so i don't know if they're gonna go that deep into it it, it might be just highly suggested what he did but um, it, it, the comic book uh, readers are very, very happy to see the storyline finally play out because this has never happened on it, it, this storyline has never been um, has never transitioned out of the comic books until now. So um, I wish it was tw- a twenty episode season instead of ten. Uh, I feel like I, I, it, it's a lot to cover in eight more episodes. Um, so we shall see where they go where, where they go with this. And don't forget. He Sinister is a geneticist. Storm lost her powers. So my guess is she's gonna probably seek refuge in the going to Mr. Sinister. Because this this version ha- a version of this happened um in two different X-Men series. The Wolverine the X-Men, um, Angel um wanted to get rid of his wings and he, he went to Mr. Sinister and Sinister pretty much made him a cyborg. 
in the in the in the original OG series, same thing happened. Since they pretty much took um, like Rogue was trying to get rid of her powers, she goes to Apocalypse. Apocalypse introduces her to Mister Sinister. Lusha goes down. So Sinister's a he's a big big he plays a huge role in like a lot of the uh, the drama that happens with like the mutants and 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 the uh, in the storyline. So I can't wait to see it. It's gonna be it's gonna be fucking bonkers. Um, yeah, so let's get it. I mean, yeah. talk about a plot twist. Like for me, you know, as a non-comic book reader, Marcy, I'm sure you can probably echo the same. Like for someone who didn't watch the series growing up, I mean, it doesn't matter. Even if I watched it, I have very short recollections of it. However, I watched it. Um, but like plot twist, right? Like it just it, it grabbed your attention. I mean, I can't speak for Marcy. Marcy, you can speak for yourself. It grabbed your attention. I'm I'm invested. I have no idea what to anticipate for the next eight episodes at all, but I'm just hoping they tell a good story. My mind is blown now. <laughs> so many more parallels to reality, like a man wanting to control like a woman and her reproductive rights. Like that could not be real life, can it? Like, no way. <laughs> Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, like, the sexual assault, you know, the right? kidnapping, like, the you know, casually, no. like what? No, um, this is insane. So now I definitely can't wait to see what happens. And you know, if your name is Mr. Sinister, of course you're probably gonna be some kind of asshole. So I'm not expecting anything good to like come from that. But yeah, I was very shocked when I saw Jane Gray come to the door. So thank you for explaining it. Now it makes more sense and now I'm more enraged. <laughs> yeah, it, it's in in the Rebel Dam. I mean, it's fucked up for Jane Gray, but like think about this. You're Cyclops. You think you you with the, you you've been with your love the love of your life for all this time. You've created you've made a baby out of this to find out that this not your this is not your woman. This is somebody else. Like this is it, it fucks up Cyclops too. So it's gonna it's gonna get crazy uh this season. But. Is he going to resent the baby though? Like it's not that baby's fault. He's gonna resent the baby. Oh my god. <laughs> I, I, I want. I want. Uh, resent's a strong word. Okay. Just know that he. It's gonna be lots of therapy. <laughs> and then does it cause a rift between him and the real Jean Grey? And then Wolverine kind of like swoops in, like, "Oh, Jean, I can like." You're going through a really hard time. I can be there for you because I'm a good friend. We know that guys like to do that. Like, what is going to happen? Is Wolverine going to have, like, an in now? Like, I love this drama. That's exactly what I was going to say. He's going to be like, I'm back in, Bob. I'm back in the game. <laughs> he thought it was over. Nope. <laughs> We're starting the second quarter. <laughs> Here we I'm go. Gonna, I'm going to start calling Wolverine Log Logan Drake uh, Arby Graham. <laughs> oh, but you know, we Frank, you talked about how you know you wish it was a twenty episode season. You're right; it's only ten. However, the episodes are ten minutes longer than than the previous, than the original series, so mm -hmm. they have a little bit more time, and they did cram a lot of content into two episodes. I got to say, because I just previously watched, like, seriously, like last week, I watched two seasons in one day, and more happened in the first two episodes of this, like more stuff that was like really awesome happened in this first two episodes that happened in those two seasons so i think um in that way to me it reminds me of the boys because the boys always have so much stuff going on and you know so many characters and stuff so i think you know i think we're in for a crazy season of uh of this x-men storyline and i can't wait and i do want to point out uh mr sinister he was a big part of the original series same voice actor for mr sinister also so I guess okay. he's evil. Yeah, he's he's coming back. So uh it's too legit to quit, yo. Yeah. Um, let's get to just kind of our final thoughts of the first two episodes. Uh Marcy, I'll start with you. What overall would you think about like are you excited to watch going forward now? I was, and I am definitely excited now. No learning what we just learned. Um, yes, I'm very excited. I want to see what happens. I want more drama, more magneto um and storm regaining her powers we can't just like let her be a regular human like yeah. we are that life sucks she has to Boy. get back to like being a badass exactly Brittany. uh what do you what are you what are your expectations going forward and how did you enjoy the first couple episodes 
I, I've said it often here, Justin, I don't have expectations or I try not to have expectations when I'm watching these shows because I'm just going to potentially set myself up for disappointment. However, because there's a resource, there's already a story and there's already content, you know, provided as long as they tell the story well, make it entertaining, make it captivating, keep your attention. I'm, I'm here for it. If they do, like what Rick Heave said in the chat, if they do what they did, like in, in the Marvels with the song and dance, as much as I love musicals, I will stop watching this show. Um, that aside, I just hope that when they play out what's going to happen between Cyclops and Jean and the, the Madeline Pryor whole situation, it's, it's just going to keep going um, into bigger, better things. I'm really, truly interested in the dynamic between Rogue and Magneto. And I hope that like goes somewhere and it's not just like for filler or sidetrack kind of thing. Uh, I do, I do believe that Magneto has ulterior motives. Of course, he's going to quickly revert back to his old ways. I would be a little disappointed if he didn't. But yeah, like I'm, I'm very invested in this show and I will play that intro every single time. I will not skip it. <laughs> no skip. Just like I don't skip it for Game of Thrones or House of the Dragon. That intro is iconic and it will be heard every single damn time. Good call. Frank, fi last word from you about these two episodes and what you're looking forward to going forward. Um, I don't think I've ever said this on this podcast, but both episodes were 10 out of 10. It, they were perfect episodes. I don't, I don't, I had no issues with it. I thought, um, and then like, it makes it easy too, because you have so much years of comic book content to, to go off of. And it looks like to me, like these writers didn't waste no time referring to the, con to the comic book content and expounding on that. So um, I thought it was great. It's, uh, and if they, I mean, a world without Charles Xavier, and it feels like it, it feels like the X-Men are still whole in a way. Like it, it, there's so much drama going on. Mm -hmm. Bringing McNeil in now um, to like have that mantle as uh, headmaster is like it's it's dope as fuck. I I can't wait to see what what they do with the storyline. I mean, because this there's there's our I mean the X-Men the X-Men Legacy storyline, the Uncanny X-Men storyline. There's a time where he does X-Men mean Wolverine. McNeil does lead the X-Men for a long period of time. So it, it does happen in the comic book. So to see this play out, um, I hope they go. If Professor X is gone for a while, this this could be Magneto's uh, exception to the storyline as the leader might be just what the doctor ordered for the series. So well said. Especially well especially said. if I'm getting more bars like like that from episode two. I know. Yeah, if I get eight more episodes of bars like that, Charles can stay dead. I'm fine with that. <laughs> My God! Oh, one thing I want to mention before we we sign off here, um, the fact that Gambit was like in the first episode when they're fighting the uh, Sentinels, like in the end, where he hops on Wolverine's back and like charges his adamantium claws, like mm -hmm. that was so badass. Like cool. I I don't remember ever seeing anything like that back in the day. And so like if we get those new little tweaks of like how these these mutants are able to kind of like assist the other with their powers like that is so innovative i love it like that caught me off guard but that was just so freaking badass um i'm hoping that something like that could potentially happen with storm like getting back her powers like gambit maybe gambit bishop and all these people need to supercharge and just like give her back her powers i don't know i don't yeah. know how that's gonna happen but like that would be just like really cool yeah that that, that was this that that scene is what like brought me back to a kid again like people people don't understand how powerful the x-men are like mm -hmm. these motherfuckers are badass like like people think the avengers they think hulk and you know scarlet witch like no fam like like these dudes are, are bad as fuck like cyclops like people don't understand how powerful cyclops is this man nosedive twenty five thousand feet in the air and like uses optic blast to break his fall and he did it with ease like it that was cool yeah, it was no issues at all. Like, and I, I was in my I was in my nerd group, uh, and <laughs> this one guy, uh, his name is Brandon. He was like, that scene. He was like, the feeling of being ridiculed and called a cop lover for years as a Cyclops fan, only to see people finally recognize Scott Summers 
is actually a goat. <laughs> <laughs> I was in tears when I saw that line. <laughs> I do think the character is better than in the original series. Like he, he was just kind of like a, a easy kind of like boy scout character, but in this one, he has there's more to Cyclops. So, yeah, I think they, the whole they, cast is elevated. Really, the whole thing mm-hmm. is elevated, honestly. For sure, they've done a they, they routinely depower Cyclops. Like he's a very he's damn near on a mega five uh, level um, uh, mutant. Like that optic blast is a is a blast from another dimension. People don't know that. Like it's he's tapping into another dimension with that optic blast. He's very very powerful. Like he's not to be fucked with but like for some reason they 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 continue to like overlook him as a as a as a uh, as a powerful mutant and it's one of the reasons why mr sinister wants his wants his dna strand so bad because he, he knows combine that with gene it's an unstoppable mutant it's yeah. it's cancel, you can cancel christmas <laughs> in the chat mcdorks asked about uh cyclops brother which that was touched upon in the um the og series you think that'll happen frank Havoc, uh, oh, which my Havoc or Vulcan? Yeah, uh, yeah, Havoc, yeah, yeah. It's it's quite possible. I mean, Havoc is a they have a strained relationship, but I mean, if if they go beyond two seasons or three seasons, I'm sure Alex Summers will, will, will show up. There's a third brother that a lot of people don't know. His name is Vulcan. He he's a he's a long lost third brother from the uh, from out of space. He's a very powerful mutant as well. He he's a he's an antihero. Um, he's he's told between the antihero and, and bad guy, but he's a no, he's another powerful mutant. If if Vulcan shows up, fam, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna come to work the following week. Like he is, <laughs> like that's like that's like high level nerdism. Like like the, to see him on the on the on the on, on the cartoon big screen. If he shows up, it might be a wrap. <laughs> he, he said he ain't coming to work. My <laughs> guy. <laughs> As long as you're on the podcast, yeah. As long as you're on the podcast, that's all that matters. Uh, Um, Before we get out here, there's a couple quick questions. Where let's hit them rapid fire style, Brittany. Yep. uh, From Raheem, he had earlier. There's one of the questions. It was uh, talking about Deadpool and Wolverine coming, the upcoming movie. Who do we think would will win in a fight if it comes to Deadpool versus Wolverine? Brittany, you first. Who who are you taking? Oof. I don't know. They they both got skills. Okay. I mean they they both have. I'm I'm more partial to. Wolverine as an OG fan of, of X-Men and whatnot. It's no disrespect to Deadpool. Deadpool, like I said, he's got some skills. He's quick. He's with the quickness. Um, but I don't know how, how either one could actually finish the other because the fact that like Deadpool can regenerate his limbs and yep. Wolverine has healing powers. He's got indestructible, like, skeletal system like i i don't know how one could finish the other truthfully so it's it's a great question but i'm gonna take wolverine just as an og fan marcy who you got wolverine or deadpool wolverine deadpool's gonna catch these hands so these claws yeah these sections for for deadpool yeah um (laughs) frank who you got wolverine or deadpool I got Deadpool, man. Like he's literally immortal. He's immortal. Like he's literally immortal. Um, that and, and that and that's like the tiebreaker is that he can't die. Like yeah. Wolverine can, like the the anti the antimantium that laces Wolverine's skeleton is poisoning his body, and and we know eventually his hidden factor will be depowered because the the, the antimantium poisoning uh, on his body. Deadpool healing power, uh, healing uh uh ability is is permanent like he can't like he literally can't die like like they've tried to kill him and like daniel's trying to kill him like he he's literally like a walking immortal mutant so i'm taking deadpool same reason but also like the movie that's coming out it's called deadpool and wolverine we know who gets top billing okay it's the merc <laughs> with the mouth so final oh, question yeah. again rapid fire style Brittany, could pull, yeah, thank you. Yep. Who do you think should be the leader of the X Men if Eric and Charles are not there to lead them? Brittany, start us off. Who should be the leader with if it's not Magneto? If it's not Mags or Professor Professor X, Mags. who you got? Not Mags or Wheels. Um, <laughs> hi, that's a that's a really that's a really good question. I'm not sure, truthfully. I mean, like again, I'm gonna want to say Wolverine because I, I I'm a huge Wolverine fan. He can be incredibly impulsive, though um you know kind of just acts on emotions and whatnot but i think in terms of like logic and such i'm kind of at a toss between like 
Jean Grey or Storm. I think both like have some sort of leadership quality and, and can use that intellect and and whatnot. So I'm it's a toss up between Jean or Storm, but um I I also could be persuaded maybe with Gambit. I don't know, but um Beignets yeah, all day, right? Beignets <laughs> all day. All right. How will I survive when you've gone so far away? Like I just come on. Like give me <laughs> give me that, that was Gambit. Good. Thank you. Thank you. I try. But uh yeah, no, I in all seriousness, I'm I'm a toss up between the real Jean Grey. Let me right. let me be specific. The real Jean Grey or Storm. Gotcha. Marcy, who should be the leader if it's not Magneto or Charles? I agree with Brittany. I think the women are just better at leadership yes! to begin with in any setting in any world. Uh, but yeah, also Gambit and his crop top, like he could lead Beignet all day. Nice. For sure. Frank, who you got as the leader if it, if it can't be Magneto or uh, Professor X? I'm going to give my answer by telling y'all to watch another series on Disney Plus called Wolverine the X-Men. And the title kind of tells you who is the leader of the X-Men that's in that in that cartoon. And it's fucking good. It's 22 episodes. It's only one season. One season but yeah. the same thing pretty much happens to Professor X and Angie and Gray and Wolverine becomes like the leader of the X-Men. It's on it's on Disney Plus. It's 22 episodes. It's really, really good. I gotta watch that. So well, my mine's would be Wolverine. Because this Wolverine, he's a more mature Wolverine. He understands what's been lost. And um, and he knows that. It, they rely on him for them to be um, prevalent in this in this world. So, yeah, I, I'll have to go Wolverine. But it's just more fun. Like I just feel like the other characters would be kind of boring. Lee, you know, at least Wolverine, you know, you know, you get some tossing masculinity from time to time, some some anger issues, while a, a great you know tactician and and um, and fighter. So, so for me, I'm gonna say morph. Because he can be Magneto or Professor X. He can be anybody. Oh, like, like it, it can be whatever. Sure. Now, I, honestly, I think it would be Beast. Beast, yeah. Yeah, Beast doesn't get, like, he's, he, even in the OG series, he, he had, like, a couple of episodes that were Beast-centric, but he's kind of, like, a background character, but he's a key character. And he's kind of, like, a character who's often still at the mansion because he can fix things and, you know, mm -hmm. save everybody from there. So, I can see him being the leader or, or storm. I think storm would be a great leader. Also storm, like a powerless storm as the leader is kind of a cool idea. Just came up with it. So, yeah. well, that's, that's kind of similar to something Raheem said earlier in the chat about uh, her being, uh, learning how to be a hero without powers. Um, you know, just, uh, being human. And that that's just kind of like, the yeah. the cards that have been dealt no pun intended to uh <laughs> to gambit but um yeah you know she might just might just come back uh here we go here's here's the quote sorry i had to look for it i think yeah. uh that maybe they can bring her back as an example that you don't need powers to be a hero but with great power comes great responsibility so i responsibility, knew you were gonna say that our responsibility to get the hell out of here so uh <laughs> uh now that you know what we think about X-Men 97, the first two episodes. We want to know what you think about it. And Brittany, how can people let us know? I mean, we always encourage everyone to join us in the live chat. Look how much fun we've had with awesome. our, our wonderful yep. followers here. McDorks, Yesenia, uh, Rahib. Uh, I think I saw M uh, moves here <laughs> earlier as well, as well as Amber of Olive Amber's Wand. So thank you so much for tuning in and listening to us ramble on about X-Men 97 and also sharing us your thoughts and questions and feedback about this pod and the two, first two episodes thus far. So as always, join us for the live chat, but subscribe, hit that like button and hit that notification bell. That way you know the next time we will go live. Uh, let us know, do you want us to cover episode three of X-Men 97? We will be more than happy to do that. But also you can follow us on social media. That's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and threads, all at Watchers Basement. Help spread the word about us by using hashtag Watchers Basement. That's when you tweet at us, uh, you want to share an article, a meme, something else that you want us to check out. We'll put that to our ever-growing list of things uh, to check out and bring 
forth to you. Lastly, if you're not into the video podcasts, such as what we're doing here on YouTube, we have audio podcasts available to you on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Be sure to subscribe there and give us a five-star rating. Thank you, Brittany. I appreciate that. Um, Marcy, it's great to have you back on the podcast. Any, any final thoughts from you? Yeah, it's glad. I'm glad to be back. I can't wait to, until episode three drops. When is it? Tomorrow? It's on Wednesday. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah as we're good. recording. Yeah, so tomorrow we'll, we'll we'll be right back at it, watching the next episode. And uh, Frank, I know you're you're not feeling too well, but I want to say I really appreciate you joining us. And it was a real like like Jordan flu game performance by you coming in the clutch, explaining all this stuff about the X Men. So thanks for being here, man. You're the real hero here. Yeah. I couldn't miss it for the world, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, man. Yep. That that's awesome. So for for Brittany, for Marcy, and for, for Frank, I'm Justin saying thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. We will see you next time. Have a good night. Bye-bye.